Hello, I'm Dr Mick O'Keefe. I'm a paediatrician from Brisbane specialising in developmental and behavioural paediatrics and I'm a member of the Specialist Advisory Committee overseeing advanced training in community child health in Australia and New Zealand. I'm here today to give you an overview of entrustable professional activities, a relatively recent innovation in medical education which is shaping up as a real game changer for our training programs. When working with trainees, supervisors make decisions based on trust every day. We decide if and when our trainees are capable of independently performing their various tasks. Entrustable professional activities are exactly what they sound like, a collection of important activities that supervisors need to be able to trust their trainees to do. Entrustable professional activities are a key feature of competency-based training, which is now considered worldwide standard in medical education. EPAs provide focus for workplace-based assessments and facilitate the assessment of real-life practical aspects of job performance. While the title, Entrustable Professional Activity, may sound like a fine piece of jargon, it's actually quite descriptive. It's talking about the key professional activities that we really need to be able to entrust our trainees to be able to carry out. Each entrustable professional activity, or EPA, includes a description of the task to be assessed, recommended teaching and learning activities, and an outline of how appropriate performance of the task could be judged. When a trainee has consistently demonstrated high level performance of a particular task, the EPA, they are then entrusted to do so independently by their supervisor. So supervisors make a deliberate decision about a trainee's competence by signing off on their ability to perform any given EPA. Choosing a set of EPAs involves an analysis of activities that are central to the specialty. So to help us choose relevant EPAs, criteria have been suggested. Firstly, tasks of high importance for daily practice, our, our core business. Secondly, tasks that are seen as high risk or prone to error. And thirdly, tasks that exemplify qualities from a range of different professional domains, as currently described in our RACP standards framework. For example, communication, medical expertise, quality and safety, ethics, professional behaviour, etc. So a useful EPA will fit into one or more of those categories. Here is an example of an entrustable professional activity for my own specialty area of community child health. The title is Assessment in Developmental and Behavioural Paediatrics, in which a trainee performs a comprehensive assessment of a child's development, behaviour, learning and emotional state, taking into account biological, psychological and social environmental factors. So this is an activity that really is central to what we do in community child health. And as you can imagine, it captures a number of elements of professional practice. Clinical knowledge, communication skills, cultural competence, ethical behaviour and quality and safety, to name a few. This elegant little diagram is Miller's Pyramid. Miller's Pyramid tells us a lot of what we need to know about competency-based medical education. As you can see, there's four tiers to the pyramid, with each level having an impact on how well a doctor carries out their professional role. Assessment methods can be mapped against the various tiers of the pyramid. The bottom tier, knows, and the next tier, knows how, are cognitive levels. They're concerned with knowledge. So we can assess factual recall, which is at the knows level, and the application of knowledge to solve problems and make decisions, the knows how level, using multiple choice questions, extended matching questions, essays or oral exams. The upper two tiers are behavioural levels. They're concerned with one's actions. The third tier shows how, describes having the capacity to perform a particular task. Uh, and we can access at this level using the long and short cases that make up our current clinical exam as well as other methods like OSCEs, clinical simulations and standardised patient tests. Now the top tier does is concerned with actual performance in a workplace setting. 
assessing at this level how well the trainee performs in a real life context has traditionally been a great challenge for specialty training programs. And this is precisely the level targeted by the tools of competency-based medical education, such as entrustable professional activities, workplace-based assessments, and portfolios. So now we have a framework to systematically assess how well our trainees go about their day-to-day -day work. Entrustable professional activities play a key role in the authentic assessment of workplace performance. As I mentioned earlier, supervisors make decisions based on trust every day when we're working with our trainees. We decide if and when our trainees are capable of independently performing their key work tasks. Entrustable professional activities provide a framework for formalising this process. EPAs will promote the direct assessment of the most important aspects of practice. And using EPAs ensures that assessment of competency in these crucial tasks is intentional and targeted, and it's not left to chance. The idea for RACP training programs is to identify a limited number of EPAs, somewhere between 10 and 25, for each training program. Trainees will then be required to achieve entrustment in each of these EPAs for their chosen training program by the conclusion of their training. The selected EPAs will provide a focus for trainees to work towards throughout their entire training program. So this ensures at the conclusion of training that we know what we're getting. We can be certain that all trainees have been entrusted to perform the same set of key professional activities. The use of entrustable professional activities within the college context will be evaluated over 2015 to 16 through pilot studies within basic training for physicians and paediatricians and also an advanced training within community child health. I, for one, am really looking forward to the outcome of these pilots. It is an exciting time to be involved in education and training within the college.